So good evening. My name is Maura Kern. I'm one of your Board of Selectmen. Thank you for coming out this evening on this uh, rainy night that we need. Um, so thank you. And welcome to the workshop for Sustainable Communities Building Blocks. So thank you and welcome. We want to welcome our guests today who are here from out of town. Um, we're here this evening to go through a workshop um, to talk about how to be resilient to the climate change impact to our environment. And we have a great team assembled here, primarily from the EPA, and I will introduce them to you. They are all here as a result of an application to receive technical assistance um, that our Coastal Resource Officer, Nancy Durfee, um, submitted, and so we're grateful to her for that. So thank you, Nancy. So I'd like you to welcome from the EPA, Rosemary Monahan, Kathleen Bailey, and Trish Garrigan. Kathleen actually came up from the headquarter office from Washington, D.C., so thank you for making that trip. Um, also here today is Rebe Rebecca Haney, who is our coastal geologist from um, Coastal Zone Management from the state of Massachusetts. She's been here um, several times in situate, very familiar with our needs. And with them, they've brought two consultants um, that are working with the EPA, Bob Daylor and Bill Bond, both from Tetra Tech. So welcome all to Situate. We're thrilled to have you here. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Kathleen, I believe, or to Rosem Rosemary, sorry, to Rosemary um, to kick it off. And she's our EPA representative. And thank you very much for coming. Thank you. I'll just say a couple of words about what this workshop is uh, about. EPA is concerned about growth and development because of its impact on, um, on our quality of our air, our water, our land. So we've developed, uh, actually Kathleen's office has developed a series of workshops on different topics. This flood resilience workshop is the most recent one that we're developing, but they're on a number of different uh, issues that confront uh, communities, like how do you make your streets safe for pedestrians and bicyclists, not just for cars? Or how do you address parking problems in your downtown? Or how do you make your community so that as people age in it, they're able to stay in the community and be able to afford to? So there's a whole series of workshops like this. Um, and what we do is when we develop a new workshop like this flood resilience one, um, we put it on in communities across the country, refine it, and then eventually post the materials on EPA's website. So a community in another part of the country could download all the workshop materials and put on a flood resilience workshop of their own once, once it's uh, finalized. And we were very impressed with Situate's letter of interest. I think there were about 100 or 120 communities around the country that applied for the flood resilience workshop. And we're only doing this workshop in five communities, including Situate. And it's because Situate has done, has our, not that you have solved all your problems by any means, but you have done so much already to be aware of how vulnerable parts of your community are to flooding and to be think and being very progressive about thinking about how to how to address it in the future. Of course, funding is always an issue. But Situate and Newburyport um, are two of the five communities around the country. So we'll do a workshop in Newburyport later. Is there anyone here from Newburyport? We invited them if they wanted to get a sneak preview of what their workshop will look like. Um, so um, so I will turn it over now to Bill Bond from Tetra Tech, who's going to uh, go over some of what we've already learned about the issues in Situate and start to lay out what the evening will bring. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, Rosemary. <clears throat> Um, today uh, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, flood resilience uh, in the community. Um, as Rosemary mentioned, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, talk a little bit about um, the process that uh, we're going through right now uh, with this uh, project. Um, uh, basically, um, uh, we, we started kind of the, the on the ground part today with a, with a nice tour of the area. And uh, we have this, this public meeting uh, right now. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a uh, full day workshop. Um, we'll, we'll meet with the, the folks, um, the different uh, uh, resources we have here and, and the, the town, uh, uh, some of the folks from the town as well. And we'll uh, put together kind of a, a list of, of actions that, uh, that uh, we, we should take to, uh, to become kind of a, a more resilient uh, uh, town. Um, 
So uh, let me uh, go ahead and, and move forward here. <coughs> Let's see if I can make this a little easier on myself. There we go. It's a bit better. Um, so uh, as, as Rosemary, Rosemary already uh, discussed a little bit ago, um, uh, basically, this, this this program is is in place here, um, and uh, <clears throat> EPA is is basically they're they're working with the willing. Um, as you mentioned, 150 different uh, uh, towns across this country um, apply for this grant. Um, so you know, the, the towns themselves are getting thinking about uh, resilience and uh, how they can become a better resilient, uh, um, how they can build resilience, and uh, so um, EPA is working with these partners. Um, they're working with uh, HUD and, and Department of Transportation, uh, and there's there's several different uh, building block uh, uh, workshops out there. Um, this just happens to be one of them. <clears throat> um, so we have big challenges. Uh, you know, we went went around today, and, and you know, whenever we're looking at uh, flood resilience and uh, uh, what what towns are facing, um, there's there's big challenges. Um, and you know that's that's across the board. Whatever you know, community I'm I'm, I'm visiting, um, we, we see what challenges they're they're facing. Uh, everyone has limited resources, um, and how can we prioritize things? And how can we make our, our community safer? Um, how can we uh, um, <clears throat> uh, you know make it uh, basically a, a more sustainable? Um, and, and so those are some of the things that we're going to, uh, to talk about today are some of those uh, challenges that, that we see um, here uh, in, uh, in Situate. So this technical assistance, um, basically um, what we've done is we've broken it up into kind of three major steps here uh, from the slides. So you might be able to see that the assess, convene, and next steps. And so before we came here uh, this week, we basically took some time to assess uh, what was going on, and I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> but we had the town fill out a self-assessment, so they kind of went through and they, they told us what was already in place. Um, they told us what they're doing currently. Um, they talked about what was currently going on. Um, and uh, we took all that information and uh, we, we looked at um, some of the gaps, so, so what are some areas where they haven't uh, either looked at or um, they, they, uh, <clears throat> they, they started to look at and maybe need some more assistance. Um, and so we had a couple of coordination calls where we sat down with the, uh, the town and uh, some of our, our resources and we talked about um, the assessment and some things that, uh, that we can, uh, we, we can um, some of the gaps in that assessment. Uh, so uh, we did that assessment process and uh, we basically have kind of a, a library of best practices across the country. Uh, so, you know, what communities are currently doing in different parts of the country. Um, and uh, we, we take a look at that. Uh, we also create our own uh, customized um, kind of best practices for this particular community because um, in some ways they are, um, they're doing a lot already um, and we'll talk about that later on. Uh, so today we had a, a tour, so we got to kind of go down, we started from the north and went, went down the coast. Um, and uh, we looked at uh, some of the things that are currently going on. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about that uh, later here. Um, so our community meeting is going to on today. We're basically going to, uh, to talk about resilience a little bit here and, and some of the, uh, um, uh, some of the uh, challenges uh, that we've identified. Uh, but we want it to be, we want to hear from you all as well, okay? So it's not just going to be me talking up here about, you know, things you already know, um, the issues you already know. We want to hear from you as well. Um, are, are the issues that I'm talking about tonight um, real for you? Uh, do you have other issues that you want to bring up? Um, and we'll have some time um, at the end to kind of go into, into groups and uh, you can provide us with some feedback um, so that we can better um, 
uh, customize the workshop tomorrow. Okay, so you know if you're reinforcing some of the things that I'm going to talk about this evening, that's great. We're happy to hear that. Um, if there are other things that we haven't thought about, you know, feel free to bring that to our attention as well. Okay, so we have, uh, as I mentioned, we have a technical workshop tomorrow. Okay, the uh, the process there is is we'll talk about some of the the different best practices and some some different thoughts. Um, and in the afternoon, we're actually going to sit down and we're going to create kind of action item lists. Okay, for everyone. So real tangible actions that, that we can take okay, to move forward on, on uh, overcoming some of these challenges. Um, and so uh, the final document uh, will be kind of a next steps document and that will come out of this, this second workshop, the one tomorrow. Um, so we'll take a look at all those uh, challenges and uh, different ideas and the actions um, that, that come out of tomorrow and we'll put together that, that, that final next steps, steps document um, which is going to detail kind of who's going to do what and the time frame and that sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the three major areas of this technical assistance for this project. Okay, so, so why are we here today? Well, um, as was mentioned, we, we did get uh, a letter um, from the town um, requesting technical assistance. You can see it there on the right. Um, the, the, the letter itself mentioned um, several coast, coastal issues um, that, uh, uh, that were going on in, in, in the town. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot of properties that were damaged um, that we'll, we'll take a look at. Um, there's uh, large insurance claims, large volume of insurance claims here in the town. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, policies and plans out there um, that may need to be more aligned. So they're moving in a consistent direction, um, looking at funds to build resi resistance as or resilience as well. Um, and then uh, we're also going to look at empowering next steps within the community. Okay, so uh, this evening, what I'm going to cover is the uh, flood resilience, uh, kind of the, uh, a little definition of that, and the checklist as well. So I'll talk about um, what we found in that checklist, a self-assessment is, is basically what that is. Um, and uh, you know, there, there are many, many things that the town is doing already, and we'll, we'll talk about those a little bit, and then some cha challenges as well. Um, you know, what can we do to, to, to make things go better? Um, <clears throat> so you see here um, some, some damage uh, that uh, has occurred uh, within recent history. Um, uh, to the area. Um, so we, we got to look through several uh, different um, storm events that have occurred um, in the town. So we looked at some of the damage to the, the areas in the coast as well as some of the, the areas uh, uh, in other parts of the floodplain. And so uh, <coughs> when we talk about resilience, you know, if I ask uh, everyone here what resilience is, I'd probably get uh, 50 different answers. You know, everyone kind of thinks of resilience differently. Um, you know, depending on what your background is, uh, depending on uh, how you may have heard it in the past. Um, so it seems to be a pretty, uh, uh, pretty hot topic. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, going back to kind of the root of it, um, you know, we're talking about springing back and actually uh, springing forward is, is something that I, I prefer to say. Um, you know, for years we talked about, you know, after disaster, getting back operational as soon as possible. Um, but you know, really, if we can come back and, and put ourselves in a better position than, than before the storm, um, you know, that's really what we want to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes these storm events, they, um, they're pretty devastating. Um, in some situations, they can, they can provide opportunity, but uh, we want to actually spring back or, and spring forward, um, rebound from the events, uh, not only quickly, but, but in, a, in a kind of a smart fashion. Uh, so, you know, think, think about absorbing shock. A lot of people think about absorbing shock when they say resilience. Um, uh, again, you know, responding, recovering quickly. Uh, we don't want to be um, in, a, in a shelter for, for, for a long period of time. Um, <clears throat> adapting to a changing environment as well. You know, as we start to do develop, development, um, we're, we're changing the, the, the built environment and that actually changes um, how we get flooded. Um, you know, if, if you have a lot of uh, uh, surface out there and, and the water can't, can't drain, um, you know, areas that might not have been flooded in the past are going to be flooded in the future. Um, <clears throat> you, we can see from 
from, from sea level rise as well. Um, you know, areas that, that, that may not have been flooded in the past. Now, if you have uh, a high tide, you might be getting flooding um, today or, or tomorrow. Okay, so we have this kind of changing environment as well we have to, we have to consider when we start to look at resilience. A couple of, uh, of quotes here. Um, the first one I, I really like. Um, <clears throat> By nature, a man hates change. Seldom will he quit his old home till it has actually fallen around his ears. Okay, I see that uh, you know, kind of across the country. It's, it's really hard for, for people to change. Like, no one wants to change. I don't want to change. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, w w until we're in a situation where we have to, a lot of people just, just won't change. Um, the other one, you know, I think is it's a little bit more positive. Uh, you know, the, the greatest glory in living lies not in never f falling, but in rising every time we fall. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, making sure that, you know, you know, we're going to get hit by a storm. You know, it, it, it happens. Um, you know, no matter where we're living, you know, something's going to occur, whether it's a hurricane or a flood or a tornado, uh, earthquake. Um, you know, we have to be prepared for that. Um, but uh, you know, making sure that we, we recover um, after that event and again, kind of spring forward with our resilience. So, why do communities need flood resilience? Um, there's a couple of kind of national pictures here. We have coastal storms, you know, here as well. You'll have coastal storms, nor'easters that are going to impact your community. Um, so you've also got, uh, you know, riverine flooding as well. Okay, there are a couple of rivers in the in the community, um, and king tides or, or high tides. Um, you know, if you have a full moon out and you start to see the the water rising. Um, so not necessarily a, a, a specific storm event, but day to day kind of you know tidal flooding is is. Uh, an issue as well, you know, roads being closed, uh, not being able to use parking lots, um, that sort of thing. Uh, the nuisance flooding can impact us as well. Um, so for this uh, uh, for this project, we've kind of uh, identified four different categories um, of ways to uh, kind of build flood resilience. Uh, the first one is conserving land, discouraging development. Okay, so. How can we, after we've identified where the problem areas are, uh, flooding, the, fl the floodplains, um, you know, how do we take that land and, and do something nice with it or good with it? Um, it doesn't involve, um, you know, putting a house there or, or some development um, that's going to be impacted. Um, and, and, you know, really, I think floodplains have kind of a, this, this bad rap, rap, you know. When I say floodplain, a lot of people just kind of, they kind of tense up and they, they get kind of irritated. Um, but, you know, floodplains are, are a natural occurrence. I mean, they, they're they there. Um, you know, a lot of wildlife considers home. Uh, you know, it can be a, a very positive thing, um, you know, basically the, the way that you, you, you plan around it. Um, you know, people will put parks in, in the floodplain. There might be some bird watching or something like that. Um, so there's, there's different ways that we can kind of conserve land and, and discourage development. Um, <clears throat> also reducing risk to people, buildings, facilities. Um, so, it, you know, <clears throat> infrastructure is already in the floodplain or uh, <clears throat> in, in an area that's impacted. Um, you know, these, uh, these structures, there are some things that you can do to the structure to, to reduce the, the impact to them. Uh, and, and I can see this throughout the community. I can see people elevating their, their structures. Um, all over the place. Um, <clears throat> the other one is planning for and encouraging development in safer areas. So if you've identified a safer area, um, you know, how do we encourage development there? Are there ways that we can um, get people to think about, okay, well, I'm not right on the beach, but maybe I'm in this other area that's not so bad because there's X, Y, and Z there um, to, uh, to help me, uh, you know, encourage me to, to move there and to live there. Um, so there's different ways that we can um, encourage development in those areas as well. Okay, and then also looking at uh, stormwater management techniques. Um, so are there things that we can put in place so that we don't have this, this constant flood, flooding issue, maybe nuisance flooding, this drainage issues um, where we have uh, you know, parts of you know, road or, or um, uh, you know, sidewalks or driveways underwater. Um, uh, or, or sewer systems, you know, what, what, what can we do to, to help um, um, with the stormwater management? 
So those are kind of the four major categories that we've uh, created for this uh, process. Um, and you'll see that uh, a lot of the uh, resilience techniques um, that are discussed are kind of in these four categories. There's different ways that you can categorize them, but this is the way that we've chose. So the, uh, the flood assessment, um, basically we gave the town this, this uh, document um, to, uh, to help um, kind of figure out what was going on in, in the town in terms of you know, what plans, policies are in place, um, what's currently being done in those four categories I just mentioned. Um, so <clears throat> so we, we took a look at the, the, the community um, kind of holistically, you know, we, we looked at a lot of different things. There are many questions that we asked. It wasn't just this one page that I've got up there. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, we wanted to, to, to kind of figure out kind of what was going on because we don't want to spend tomorrow going through stuff they're already doing. You know, I can go around the community, I can see, you know, they're using grant money to elevate homes. You know, I don't, obviously, you know, this community is, is pretty well educated there. Um, so, uh, so this helps us to figure out how we should uh, um, adjust the, the workshop on the second day to, uh, to better uh, <clears throat> figure out, um, prioritize the areas we need to, to discuss. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we went through this, this self-assessment. Um, you know, we got some, some great information out of it. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that here in the next couple of slides. Um, <clears throat> you know, this town has, has a lot of plans. Um, you know, you've got... Uh, there, you've got your hazard mitigation plan that's currently going on, it's being updated. <clears throat> um, if you're not uh, familiar with that, it's actually the process is going on now. There are public meetings associated with that process that you can get involved with. Um, <clears throat> this is the plan that uh, the, the, the town basically says, this is where we want to mitigate, okay? Um, it's a public document, you can get it off the website, um, you should be involved in the process. Um, as I mentioned, it's currently being updated. There's not a lot of towns in the state that have mitigation plans, okay? So it's, it's a big positive. And the fact that they're updating it and, uh, and are gonna be using some of the, the updated information is, is also a good positive. Um, you have uh, uh, different coastal plans out there. You have a master plan. Um, <clears throat> you've also had uh, a couple of uh, climate change uh, plans as well. Um, so somebody's actually gone through and they've identified areas that are going to be impacted in the future based on a certain amount of sea level rise. Okay, a lot of communities do not have that information, unfortunately. Um, they've got to kind of guess where the floodplain is going to be. Um, and uh, you've got that additional information to, to help you with kind of some of your long-term planning. You know, if it's going to look like this in 50 years or 100 years, um, you know, what what type of infrastructure should we be considering? Um, so, uh, so you've got you've got that as well. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of nice plans and, and studies going on here um, that I don't see in, in many communities. <coughs> okay, you've also got uh, uh, very educated town staff that uh, have uh, they're, they're really using the, the grant system well. Um, there's several different federal grants out there. Um, sometimes it's difficult to get to get matching funds as well, um, and there's lots of mitigation projects throughout this this town. Um, you can see that just driving down the street, um, <clears throat> and that's that's also a, a great positive. Um, uh, <clears throat> some of the, uh, the the challenges that, that came up during the, the self assessment are um, some of the coastal developments. You've got a lot of repetitive loss properties, um, so those are properties that have been impacted at least twice. Okay, over a, a 10 year period. Um, so uh, if you look at the, the maps and you look at the repetitive loss properties, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, <clears throat> I think there's over 500 in this, in this town alone, which is I think about a quarter of, of all of Massachusetts. Um, so you've got a lot of repetitive loss properties. There's also something called uh, severe uh, repetitive loss properties, and those have been damaged even more. Um, you also have uh, Issues with septic systems. Okay, we, we saw some of that as well. Um, a lot of your uh, the, the residences on the beach do have septic systems, um, and when the storms come through, um, that those areas get get eroded and, and get uncovered, and uh, you're looking at your your septic there. Um, some some seawall concerns as well. So uh, <coughs> um, although some of the seawall is, is being um, 
um, updated. There are some, some issues with, with cracking. Um, there's also, from the picture there, some adjacent properties um, right, next, right basically on top of the seawall in a couple of locations. Okay, you also have uh, some flooding at high tide um, as well. Um, some of the parking lots flooded in, in certain areas. Um, uh, so, so that was, uh, was also um, an issue that was brought up. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so those are some of the, the issues that we found kind of going around today. Um, and uh, <clears throat> basically the next couple of slides um, show some of the things that are going on in this community to help, um, to help mitigate that or, or build resilience. Um, we have uh, areas where, um, like I mentioned, conserving land, discouraging development, you know, turning areas that are in the floodplain uh, into, into things like parks. Parks will get damaged during a flood, but it's, it's nothing like a, a residence or a business. Um, and, and you can see there from the, the park that's, that's flooded right there, you know, there's not a lot there. There's some park benches, maybe some lights. Um, you know, those types of things are not going to, to impact the, the flood water and that sort of thing as well. Um, and, you know, once it dries out, it's, it's not too much to, to maintain. Um, so, so doing stuff like that, um, we have, uh, you have a setback as well in your, your salt, salt marsh, marsh areas. Um, I think it's a couple hundred feet, probably 200 or so um, on, on your properties. Um, so there is, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, things like that are, are in place already. Uh, we can build on. Um, as I mentioned, you've, you've got a lot of uh, elevated structures um, that, uh, that we saw um, today. Um, so we kind of drove around and we looked at that. Um, you know, it looks like uh, residents or, or people living in these homes are, are uh, <coughs> uh, wanting to elevate, which is a good sign. Um, I actually just did a, uh, a similar workshop in, uh, in uh, I'll just say in a, in a southern state on the coast um, in, the, in the Gulf area and uh, they couldn't find, it's a major city, much bigger than, than here, and they couldn't find a single person to, to elevate. Um, no one wanted the federal government involved and so they were having issues just finding one person to elevate their home so they can show the rest of them that hey, this can happen, this is possible. Um, and that was, it was pretty discouraging, but, but here you've got a lot of great examples um, up and down the, the road. Um, another one, this is, I guess, pretty recent, um, uh, but again, using grant, grant funding to, to elevate. Um, looking at beach nourishment as well, we looked at a site um, where uh, the, the town received uh, funding to, to do some beach nourishment on, in a public area. Um, also, that you've got a big seawall in the background as well. Um, you know, it's it's a big piece of infrastructure. It's very costly, um, and that's 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 there. Um, <coughs> as I mentioned, the, the, the different plannings. You got your your zoning uh, as well, and we'll we'll talk about that more tomorrow. But um, you know, there there are um, techniques that can be used with uh, um, uh, using zoning. Um, so you've got your, your zoning map there um, <clears throat> as an example. Okay, you also have different uh, regulations in place. Um, wetland protection rules and regulations are, are one of those okay, that the, the town has and they can use. Okay, there's also stormwater management techniques that can be used. Um, you know, that's just an example of uh, uh, a way to get the, the water instead of having just this big impervious surface, you've got a way for the water to drain through. Um, it looks nice, okay, it's not just a big uh, sidewalk or piece of concrete. Um, <clears throat> and there's, there's other things that can be done as well, pervious surfaces um, that, uh, that help with the stormwater management. Um, <clears throat> you've also got a uh, uh, stormwater ordinance here in, the, in this particular town. Um, so, <clears throat> um, there's a lot, of, lot to work with in this, in this town, um, and uh, it, it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, we've got, uh, as I mentioned, the, the workshop tomorrow, uh, where uh, basically we're going to 
to bring up some best practices for kind of each of these four categories, um, different uh, places around the country that have done and implemented different uh, different things, um, uh, using different uh, techniques. Um, but uh, uh, basically, today, what we want to do is get feedback from you all. You know, what are your issues um, here? Um, in this town, and uh, what we plan to do is basically break up into groups. Um, looks like uh, we've got enough folks. We've, we basically have planned it out for, for about four different groups. Um, we've got some tables here, my left and right. We have two tables in the back as well. Um, I would ask that maybe some of the folks who have mobility issues, maybe uh, if, if the rest of you can save those tables up front for them. Um, what we want to do is uh, <clears throat> basically break up into groups and we've got some, some maps that have been developed by different programs. We have maps um, that uh, uh, basically show different vulnerable areas. We have maps for the, uh, from the sea level rise study. We have maps from uh, coastal zone management um, here as well that show uh, some, of the, uh, some of the issues in the, in the community. Um, and, uh, and basically what I want to do is we'll, we'll break into groups, um, we'll have, we'll try to make it somewhat equal, um, and what we want to do is basically hear from, from you all. Um, we want to hear um, what your issues are, um, have we touched on any of those, um, if you have other issues, uh, you know, what are they? Um, again, we want to focus on, on, you know, kind of dealing with the, the flood situation. Um, you know whether that's uh, that's from the coast, the coastal storms, or whether it's from high tide. You know all that that information. We do have some some maps to help kind of guide the process. Sometimes people, when they see the map and they can see their home or their business, it helps them think about you know how they can uh, uh, you know, kind of what's going on in their community, and they can help kind of relate it better to us as well or relay it to us, uh, so we kind of know what what situation they're dealing with. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, so basically what I want to do for kind of the rest of our, our time is to uh, kind of go through, um, we'll break into groups, um, we'll spend about, I don't know, 45 minutes or so, 30, 45, minute, 45 minutes um, in groups. Um, we'll have a facilitator each, at each table kind of taking notes and we'll have maybe some sticky, sticky notes that uh, you take notes on. Um, so we'll work in those groups and then we'll kind of come back together at the end and uh, what I want to do is kind of do a debrief on each of the groups and, and what they've decided are their major issues. Um, and that will help us to better plan for tomorrow. Okay, and again, we'll have that next step steps document where we'll talk about these issues that we identified today and tonight uh, and actions uh, that we can take to, to help address those.